You might remember that I wasn't the biggest fan of the Galaxy Z Flip 4 because it's like, why is the, the vertical flipping? I don't get it. But Oppo sponsored this video on the Find N2 Flip, which has a similar form factor, but with some tweaks to maybe make it more interesting. So maybe they can change my mind, you know? Maybe, maybe this form factor is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. We'll have to find out in this unboxing of, of the thing I just said. So there's still not a ton of vertically flipping phones out there in the world. There's the Samsung Galaxy Flip, there's the Motorola Razr, I think there might be one or two other ones, but uh, it's still somewhat an, of, a, of a new form factor. So companies are still figuring out how to make the most of it. How, you know, what to put on the exterior screen, how big to make the screen inside, you know, the crease on the on the on the inside display is is still an issue. But Oppo thinks that they've uh, addressed many of those things. But before we actually get to the phone itself, I'm going to tell you what's in the box of the Oppo Find N2 Flip. There's a big chunky power adapter, 67 watts with Super VUC. It also comes with, okay, interesting. It comes with a USB-A to USB-C uh, charging cord. And then we got a, a chunky envelope with a special letter. The letter says, I'm not a letter, I'm a, I'm a case for your phone. Documents, quick guide, safety guide, another safety guide for extra safety. Very cool, very cool to know all of that stuff is in the box. Uh, is that it? Wow, it's Christmas, it's Christmas. Hasselblad. Oppo has partnered with Hasselblad. I think that they started on uh, OnePlus phones and now they've brought this integration into the main Oppo line. Um, hmm. I like the feel in the hand, it's pretty thin. Is that rubberized? There's like a bumper around the display. That's actually really cool. I don't think the Galaxy Z Flip 4 had that. That's cool. I mean, it makes it look like slightly less premium, but I actually really like that because that way I know that, you know, when you flip it closed, you're not, there's not like metal on plastic on plastic. It's like, you know, there's a little bit of a protection there when you, when you, when you, when you clap when someone has done something really well. Good job. That flip motion felt, felt pretty smooth. This is using Oppo's flexion hinge technology. And apparently that also contributes to the less visible screen crease. I mean, we'll, we'll be the judge of that when we turn it on. Obviously, you know, when it's off, any foldable phone, you're gonna be able to see that crease right in the middle, but I'll be the judge of how effective it hides it when the phone display is actually on. On the right side, we have a vo volume rocker and a power button slash fingerprint reader, I'm guessing. Yep. On the bottom, we got the USB type C port, a speaker. Is there another speaker on the top? Nope, just one speaker on the bottom and a SIM card tray that can hold two 5G SIM cards, something that we here in uh, North America are not really used to having, but is fairly you know, standard in uh, China and Europe. Um, on this side, we got nothing. And on the top, which I already looked at, I mean, we got some mics or something. I don't know, ambient noise sensor. I'm just making this stuff up. <laughs> So on the back, you might have noticed I didn't say anything about it the first time because I was just reading the text down here. I'm just more of a text guy. But this is what Oppo says is the largest uh, display on the front of a you know flippy style fold folding phone like this. It is 3.2 inches with a resolution of 720 by 382. I just remember that off the top of my head. Over here, we have one of these is a 50 megapixel main shooter and uh, a eight megapixel wide camera. And then a flash and another type of uh, doohickey sensor. There's information going in there, trust me. And, oh, one more thing about the, the back here while we're here. This is the moonlit purple uh, color and it's anti-fingerprint. They also have another color called astral black. All right, let's see how this thing plays when there's some power in the in the room. Why does it turn on? All right, let's see this. All right, all right. It's not turning on. I pressed the button like, turn on for me. Uh, is it, okay, there we go. I'm not a very forceful person. We've got a uh, nice big 6.8 inch display here. Uh, apparently the brightness goes up to 500 nits typical. That is pretty bright on the display. In person, you know, it, 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 it's not overwhelming. Uh, 1600 
nits uh, peak brightness. Uh, so that's pretty good, actually. Phones in China uh, often launch without Google Play services, but this one does have Google Play services. So let's go to YouTube, because I want to I wanna look at the, how, how nice this screen looks. We'll have to see with Crab Rave. <laughs> the colors look pretty nice. I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's hard to not compare something when to another phone when it's not right there in front of you, but I mean, this looks pretty nice to me. It's a 2520 by 1080 resolution with a refresh rate of 120 hertz. Although, like most uh, phones with fast refresh rates these days, it does have adaptive refresh rate, so it'll change depending on what you're doing. Let's listen to the speakers. Okay, skip. At max volume, there is like a slight bit of distortion, so uh, just be aware of that. Although if you kind of just take it down a little bit from max, it, it uh, the distortion basically goes away. A lot of the time, phone speakers you know end up sounding really tinny with a lot of like high end, but not a ton of, of the lower end. So it's nice to see that like it does have some oomph. We can talk about the normal phony type features of the phone all day, but what we are really interested in with a phone like this that folds in half is you know the things more related to that, like the fact that there's this giant screen on the front now. Um, one of the features that Oppo has added is this kind of like automatic uh, feature where it shows information related to the app that you just had open on the front display. So if you were listening to music as we just were on YouTube, you close it up and you can still control it right there. I don't even have the app open, I closed the app, but it knows that that was the last thing I was doing, so then it has it right there. That's pretty cool. There are some other things you can do with the front display. There's a little lock icon there because I have to unlock it with the fingerprint reader, which is gonna... <laughs> oh, what was that? Was it just checking my face? I thought the face unlock only worked when uh, the phone was open from the inside, but when you close it, it locks. But if you look at it, if you set up face unlock as I have, it... then it... it took a second. <laughs> But it did it. So now on the cover screen, you have a couple more options available to you than when it was locked. If you, you can swipe down to access your quick settings, you can swipe up to have notifications. And if you swipe to the left, you get widgets. Now, Samsung had this in their Galaxy Z Flip as well. Like, you'd think that you would, would just be able to use this, like it's the size of a little phone screen. I will say that this is way bigger than the one on the Z Flip 4, which is really nice. Now that it's so big, I wanna use it like a regular phone. It's gonna tell me that I can't use it like a regular phone. I can't like, you know, use it as if it's a tiny little phone. I have to use these widgets, which is, you know, it's something. I have to say before I go any further that as cool as it is to use the, the cover screen for stuff, in what situation are you not gonna be able to just unflip it and do, this is why I don't understand this form factor. I mean, okay, look, I'll say this. As far as, uh, you know, the flip form factor goes, people want to use it, people think it's cool. I will say, yeah, it's definitely cool. Well, I got a call, whoosh, <laughs> that felt really cool. Do you know how cool I am, person I'm talking to on the phone? And they don't because they didn't see you do it. So at the very least, they're making the screen as big as possible, so that's good. So if I swipe to the, uh, swipe to the right, I get, some options to use the, the camera. We're gonna look at that in a second. And then we got weather, we got a timer. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can just like take it out and go boop, boop, start a 15 minute timer. So if you swipe down on the home screen, it brings you to this shelf interface, which appears to be basically like, you know, uh, a bunch of widgets that you can add to a separate section other than adding them, instead of adding them to the home screen. Honestly, I kind of appreciate that. I've always liked widgets. I've I used them back on my like 2006 MacBook when, when Apple added them, um, but Apple had them on a separate screen, which I kind of like actually, because I like my home screen to be very, very simple. Now, despite all my misgivings about this form factor, what you're looking at here is probably one of the biggest uh, advantages of having a form factor like this, because you can, you have these cameras that in other phones are locked into this slab form factor and you're trying to take a photo and you do this and it's so annoying. But with a flip phone, you can kind of just set it up like that. And I mean, just look at it really, it looks cool. Now I'm doing a, a video call and I want to, so I slick, slick down into my chair like this and that, and 
now we're we're now we're talking quarterly reports. Let's actually open the camera up and uh, see some of the different ways that they've implemented this. So yeah, okay, so we got this. Oh um, well, hello. Okay, so that's something I'm complaining about a little bit. I would like it to have a little bit more. <laughs> I would like it to have a little bit more ability to stay exactly where I want it to be there. But uh, you know, overall, I think that that's not too bad. And it can definitely have a lot more range before closing automatically on this side of the hinge. But when it gets to this side, it kind of wants to go a little bit more. Move further away. I can take a photo of the guys like this. Oh wait, I'm gonna do a video. Are you ready? And it's gonna be like a dolly. Oh no. Here we go. Now look shocked. Oh! Wow. And likewise, you can flip the camera around with the flip this one. And now I'm on video mode. And now I can talk down to you like I'm better than you because don't forget, I am. <laughs> Other flip phones have had features like this where you are able to see the preview of the camera on the, uh, on the cover screen here. But, you know, with this big honking screen on the front, it's, I feel like it's better than ever because now I can actually see what I look like. Oh man, is there like blurring too, automatically? I want you to see the real me. Ready guys? Yay! Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that background blurring. I mean, I'm in portrait mode, I guess. Oppo also added this feature called dual screen view, the ability to see the preview of what you're gonna take for the photo on this side and that side at the same time. So if you're taking a photo of people who are very, very particular about how they wanna look, they can direct you like Sven. He won't shut up about it, honestly. I need my perfect angle. So those people can kind of direct you uh, to uh, how they want the photo to be. Now, if I say ultra wide here, you get that that's yeah. reflected for you guys yeah. too? I'm just gonna take just you guys, just to remember this moment. And we'll be like, remember when we did that shoot for five hours? Three, two, one, go! Nice. And boom, and now I'm in camcorder capture mode. They, they, they want you to do this and then it just does that. And then they also have a camcorder uh, record mode because, you know, I, I will say that like, I thought this was kind of silly when I first saw people uh, doing it with uh, flip phones, but I can kind of understand, like it, it is a little easier to record something like with your phone, like with your hand in this position than it is to like hold your phone out like this the whole time or like this. Interestingly, the selfie camera is 32 megapixels, which is actually like, that's a lot. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I know we're not doing extensive testing on the quality, but like this looks, Looks pretty sharp as far as selfie cameras go in other phones that I've seen. Um, with a 50 megapixel and an eight megapixel on the back, it's cool to see them throw a 32 megapixel as the selfie. Here, here in my garage. <laughs> okay. So a couple things about the phone that I haven't really mentioned yet. It's got a Dimensity 9000 octa-core processor. They've also got the Mary Silicon X neural processing unit in there. You know, every phone has to have some sort of neural network chip. But another interesting thing is that this has the largest battery of any of the kind of like pocket flip phones at 4,300 milliamp hours. Uh, that combined with the super VOOC charging uh, should make it so that you aren't really uh, hurting for, uh, for power at any point. Color OS is the other thing. Um, this is based on Android 13. And interestingly, Oppo has a different, you know, Android skin for their Oppo branded phones than they do for OnePlus. A lot of people like the Oxygen OS uh, implementation in OnePlus phones. And uh, Color OS is also pretty good, although I would really like to see them bring some of the other features that Oxygen OS has that are very popular over to the, uh, the Color OS. As for RAM and storage, uh, the base model has 256 gigs of storage and eight gigs of RAM and that's gonna be around $1,000 US or whatever that equivalent of, of that is in Europe and, and China. Um, but we also have this feature here that I've actually never seen in a phone, but uh, apparently is, is a thing that's going around right now. You can claim some of the 256 gig SSD as RAM by sliding that up. And then when you kind of come up to your storage limit, you're like, oh, I do need a little, like I've, I've used all 
200 and whatever it would be, 252 gigs uh, that are left, you can slide that back and use a little bit less RAM so you can really just continue to be irresponsible with storage management on your phone. So that's kind of cool to see, honestly. That's the first time I've seen it. And last thing, the pocket test. You don't say, I'll see, I'll see you there. This is still why I don't really get it. This actually feels a little bit smoother than the Galaxy Z Flip, uh, Flip 4 uh, sliding in there. I think that they have a bit of a flatter, follow me down. Good. <laughs> I think they have a little bit of a flatter profile. Uh, uh, I think the Z Flip 4 has like a little bit more of a space here. I might be tripping, but this feels um, very flat and slim going into the pocket. So I'll, you know, I'll, I'll side with the flippy people uh, a little bit by saying that if, if, you know, if we can get these phones down to a really slim situation, then I can understand a little bit more. But I still don't understand why you would want a square in your pocket instead of like a thinner slab, you know, like I was, I mean, that doesn't, that looks ugly. Like it's just poking out of there. It's just like, hello. All right, you've convinced me. All right, Oppo, fine. I like flip phones now, okay? Are you happy? I still, I wanna do the big foldy boys, uh, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, have we already done the Oppo Find N2 non-flip? Maybe we will someday. But for now, uh, this has impressed me. So thank you for sending it, Oppo, and thank you for watching. Subscribe to for more tech news just like this, and don't forget to subscribe and follow Just saying short short circuit. Circuit. No, 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 this is the feud. The feud is happening. Okay.